Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace. Gershenson. Today we have a very, very special show and we have a very special guest, Lauren Piotrowski. She came to us from Hancock Shaker Village. She's a head grower and also she's managing a CSA and she'll tell us all about it. Hancock Shaker Village is in Pittsfield. Mm -hmm. It's uh, at the intersection of Route 20 and Route 7 mm -hmm. and um, Hancock Shaker Village uh, is preserving and um, continuing the tradition of the Shakers who unfortunately are not around anymore but the place is thriving and look at these vegetables you can tell how thriving the place is by looking at this beautiful display of what good soil a lot of love hard work yes hard work to us <laughs> and we need to take advantage of it so I'll tell you what we're going to cook today and Lauren is going to tell us all about what is so special um, about what they are doing. So um, we decided that to use uh, some of the produce in uh, two dishes that we are going to do today. And by the way, we will have uh, a second episode. So make sure to tune in when we are going to be doing something different. Yes. Um, and uh, red cabbage, apple, beet, um, leek, some kale, and uh, some some greens like maybe um, cutting, cutting yeah maybe maybe cutting celery which I never even heard about <laughs> <laughs> but we'll put it into our salad and so while I'm going to be uh, yes and the second one will be uh, five minute beets we will cook the beets and then we will dress them with a nice yogurt based dr dressing flavorful and delicious and fry some eggs from uh, from Hancock Shaker Village. I saw these chickens running myself <laughs> and um, and then we'll try it. Okay, so Lauren, uh, please um, let us know, you know, what is so special about this place that you are really so in love with. Well, the farm at Shaker Village is unique in that it's a small farm, an heirloom farm that does carry on the farming traditions of the Shakers. Um, the Shakers aren't in Pittsfield anymore, but there are some living up in Maine. And we actually meet with them and speak with them about how they do things or what, um, what methods of farming that, that they used on their land. And yeah. we incorporate that into the farming practices at Shaker. But um, my job at Shaker Village is managing the CSA. And we serve about 50 families right now. We're a small CSA with heirloom veggies grown seasonally right here in the Berkshires. We also serve our own farm to table cafe and give plenty of produce to um, the food pantries in the Berkshires as well. Yes, I wanted to ask you to, uh, to, tell, to tell our viewers what CSA. Some people have no idea oh. what this abbreviation stands for. It's funny because I say it all the time, CSA, oh, CSA, CSA. And, CSA. People, ask and people say, CSA? what CSA? They think yeah. I'm like a scientist or something yes. or I work in a big company. Um, CSA stands for Community Supported Agriculture, and you may know it as a farm share program. So people contact our farm in the spring and they buy a membership. And for um, either the cost of 330 for a small family of one or two, or for 600 for a larger family of three or four, they get a basket of veggies every week throughout the growing season. So they help us financially in the spring with our seed costs and our startup costs, and then they get to share in our triumphs throughout the season. That's, that's wonderful. I yes. know that you also have um, surplus of seeds. Yes, And yes. then what, what do you do with them? Another thing we do at Shaker Village to um, keep the Shaker tradition going is we save heirloom seeds. We have several varieties there. 
that have been developed and grown by the Shakers, who we're pioneers of the seed saving and selling industry. And um, every year we plant them with love, we take care of them, we harvest the seeds and sell them in our store. We also plant them as well. Um, and when we have surplus, we have a partnership now with the Berkshire Public, um, with the Berkshire Anthenaeum yes. and, their, and, their, and their seed library. Yes. And so our seeds are also going to the seed library. They can be checked out for free f um, by library members and planted in their own gardens. Yes, that's, that's very generous of you and really wonderful to let people know that they can do that. Yeah. Um, I also... You know, while I'm chopping the red cabbage, and of course, you know, I've talked about the nutrients and all these vegetables <laughs> on so many of my shows. I hope that you were watching because I want to focus today on, you know, the message that Lauren can give us about why it is, um, why it is important uh, to eat, you know, from the earth. Uh, and what is so special about these vegetables that were that just picked and how they are different from organic vegetables that we would, would be buying uh, flown to us from right. f far away. But in the meantime, I wanted to say that I'm, I'm making this dressing by grating some garlic, like one clove of garlic, and adding lemon juice, maybe a couple of tablespoons, and some salt and letting, uh, letting it sit so that the garlic will soften and won't oh, be nice. so sharp. And then we will add uh, olive oil to it um, for the dressing. And then um, also I'll be, you know, while I'm cooking, you can, I know our viewers can also listen to you. Right. And <laughs> watch what I'm doing at the same time. Fantastic. Here, okay. I'll show some of our garlic. You know, this is just finished curing when you talked about it having a bit of a sharp taste. Yes. We had a great garlic season this year. Beautiful big bulbs. Yes. I pulled off some of the outer things and had these for sale at our country fair this past weekend. Um, it's a wonderful variety, German hardy. It's been passed down at the garden at Shaker, grown there. Yes. And as, it's, as it sits and will last the year, the flavor will mellow as well. But really? this is a great tip for, so, so for what to do if, when it's just freshly cured, that strong, pungent garlic okay. taste, if you wanted to soften so it. So you are saying that as it sits, it mellows. It, but it, at some point, doesn't it, when you have this little sprout, doesn't it start getting kind of bitter? Um, yes, it would. If you don't store it properly, like yes. if you store it in the fridge, it can come out of dormancy. Right. And, okay. you know, you could either plant it in yes. your garden or use it right away. So and then it might have a bit of a bitter taste. So it's important to know how to store it. Okay. Yes, just room temperature someplace dark yes. and with air circulation, not yes. in the fridge, unless you're going to use it right away. I use garlic really fast. Yes, I do. <laughs> yes. It just flies. I was really excited when you contacted me about the um, ingredients I had available for you. Yes. Obviously had a lot, yes. but I picked some things that sometimes our CSA members don't exactly know what to do with. Sometimes um, when we harvest cabbage, they'll get a cabbage. It's not something that they always buy in yes. the grocery store. Beets, I love beets. I could eat them every day. Yes. But that wasn't until a couple years ago. I didn't even like them before. Yes. I love them now. But these dishes will give us some ideas for things to do with these veggies that may aren't, maybe aren't as simple as tomatoes or cucumbers or lettuce that our CSA members get. And the leek, your leeks are so beautiful. We picked those leeks yesterday, aren't they pretty? They are, they are gorgeous. It's very soft also. That's nice. Um, it has some soil here, so if you are going to start from here, mm -hmm. then you, you should wash it under running water. But this time, I just chopped off the end, and I cut it in half nice. horizontally, and now I'm getting these slices, and we know that um, leeks are, are great prebiotics, which means that they help um, feed your gut flora, mm -hmm. but also that's why I want to talk about the soil. Yeah. Because um, it's, you know, unless you grow your vegetables in healthy soil, there is no way that you are going to get nutrients from your vegetables. Yeah, that's something I'm personally pa passionate about and that we're passionate about at Shaker Village is creating a really healthy ecosystem on our farm for our veggies. And for us, that starts with the soil. Um, any organic produce is, is good, and it's, and it's definitely preferable to things that are grown conventionally with lots of pesticides. But a step up from organic is local food grown in really thriving, healthy soil. Um, when soil is healthy, it's crumbly, it's alive, there are 
bacteria, there are nematodes, there are worms living in there. It's a whole other, wor other world. And when that soil is thriving, the veggies are thriving. They're pulling up minerals. They're creating their own defenses against um, disease pressure and insect pressure. And they taste amazing. So one of the things we've done at Shaker Village is um, really shift to um, cover cropping, mulching a lot, reintroducing some minerals that have been leached from the soil from years and years and years of farming. And we have a really great start on it and a really healthy soil ecosystem. And the veggies come out gorgeous, yes. full of flavor, and also um, really nutritious for us. So we have healthy soil, healthy veggies. We eat them, we're healthy, happy, and thriving. And then yes. we just want to cook and work on the farm. And I, also <laughs> wanted to, I also want to give a little bit of um, uh, kind of uh, warning, not warning, but advice to people who would be eating your vegetables because yeah. I, I have noticed that there is a little more bitterness in them, yeah. which is really a very good thing mm -hmm. because bitter is the flavor that you absolutely need and that contributes to your health. Right. And so some people feel like, oh, it's bitter, but uh, open, open up your hearts and, right. and your palates and embrace. Like, for example, this Russian kale that I will ask you to cut for me because yeah, sure. I want to put it there. Um, it, is, it has extremely soft texture. It's just you, t you take it into your mouth and you just, just um, you know, um, very easy to chew. But it has a little bit of, of bitterness and, and actually that's a good thing. So to, you can kind of like roll it like that, right? To cut it um, and put it into your, uh, into your salad. I think you would find with veggies from a CSA, there's a wider variety of flavors within them than you yes. would get at the market. Right. And a lot of that has to do with the season. You know, we're coming off of a pretty warm summer and our kale really hasn't developed that sweet nuttiness that it will have in a couple weeks after we've had some much cooler nights. So you'll notice, you know, spring kale is a different taste than summer kale yes. and then fall kale. A uh, member asked me yesterday, Lauren, will you pick the parsnips? I want parsnips. And I said, I have to wait till after the first frost or they won't turn sweet. So being a CSA member, you can kind of experience the arc of taste, how the veggies change in response to the weather, in response to the time of year, and the time of picking. This is wonderful. Um, I'm, I'm really looking forward to, to eating, eating all of this. So Me too. I added a little bit of mustard because it goes very nicely with, with all of these uh, vegetables that I'm using. And now I'm going to be whisking in some olive oil and um, a little bit of black pepper. And of course, I always taste things. So um, then we will just toss, toss it together and this our salad beautiful. will be ready. Looks and beautiful. in the meantime, um, okay, let's see. Mm, very sharp, but this is what I want because uh, you need to have your dressing really seasoned because vegetables have their, have their own flavors, but they will absorb it very quickly. And so you want it, your salad to be also very flavorful. Okay, so while y while you are talking, maybe um, I'll give you two spoons. Certainly, and maybe you can toss them Whoops. together, right? Yes, perfect. And I'll start with my second recipe. Um, this so is beautiful. Yeah, <laughs> doesn't it look so pretty? I also wanted to to add some of your cutting celery to that. It looks like a party. Yes, Ooh. well, it is a party. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, so we were talking about, um, you know, our, our gut. And yes. we know now that, that, that most of our immune system resides in the gut and that we have a lot of autoimmune disease now mm -hmm. and people don't know what to do. But this is really the answer. The answer is to, to buy this produce, right? Mm -hmm. And to eat it and, um, and you will start thriving because you will start rebuilding. You will give, uh, rebuilding your gut, you will give uh, you know, the nutrients to, um, to, to your gut that, that they are really like crying for. Uh, and when they talk about some chemicals not affecting humans, yes. they may not affect our systems, but they have pathways, 
they affect the microbes that are living in our gut, which in turn affect our systems. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's really important to understand the complexity yep. of the way these things work. And eating as close to the way our ancestors ate is really what our guts and our whole beings want to thrive. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you for, for um, explaining this so, so eloquently. <laughs> Um, so now we are going to be sautéing the beets. Um, I melted, you can put like depending on how many beets you have, I had that one huge beet and I grated it and you see that I probably have like three cups of grated beets here. You can take a couple of tablespoons of butter, you know, butter makes everything better. And we need actually the fat, we need the fat. People, you know, have this misconception that you need to eat low fat diet or no fat diet and and fat is, is a not only flavor carrier, but also carries nutrients like, uh, for example, carotenoids, you mm -hmm. know, vitamin A, mm -hmm. that unless you are having your carrot with some fat, it's not going to be absorbed as, as well. All right, so here we are going to just add a little bit of salt. Let me clean my hands. So our grandmothers were smart when they were putting butter on our carrots and everything, Absolutely, right? Absolutely, yes. <laughs> We better <laughs> go back to re remembering, you know, what our grandmothers were doing. Okay, so always season right away, okay, because then um, your vegetable is going to absorb it and get more delicious. All right, so so tell me, tell me more. I'm I'm so excited about the messages you're delivering here today. Well, what do you want to hear more about specifically? Well, I'd like to know. Um, you know, first of all, I want to know about, you, you were talking about your CSA members. Yep. And did you mention how much it costs? Oh, I don't think I yes. did. Our CSA is, it's affordable for families in the Berkshires. We have two share options. Um, our first one is 330 for a, a smaller family. The larger is for a bigger, it is $600. Um, that's a special that if you sign up by, I believe, November 30th, that price will hold in effect. Yes. Um, we want to charge enough so that we have the money to grow the vegetables and pay the staff to pick them for you guys, but we want it to be affordable for people. I really don't believe that organic, healthy vegetables need to be a luxury item. They should be a staple of what we have in our diets. And our in our CSA really follows the seasons of the Berkshires in the spring. You'll get small, tender greens. You may get, you know, a light bag of produce, but mid-season we have corn, tomatoes, cucumbers, everything you can imagine. And for a family, yes. it really is quite a value. And as much of, as I like to think about the gut and the soil health, really the way that we get people to eat this stuff is because it tastes amazing. Yes. We have some older members who come and they say, ah, oh, this is what vegetables used to taste like. Right. And that's the best compliment that I can yes. have. I have added a little bit of leeks because we have them. You don't have to. It can be, you know, you can make this dish without leeks. So I covered it and I am cooking uh, for, for the uh, beets to get soft and then we are going to make a, a special dressing, but I also want to uh, fry some eggs because they will be very nice with a soft beef. It will be yeah. very nice to have um, some crispy eggs. That sounds good. Yes. And our so chickens are these wild, happy, free-ranging chickens at Shaker Village. Their eggs reflect that. The yolks are bright. They taste really beautiful. And the chickens actually, they got in a little trouble last week. They were in the p tomato patch oh and they were eating wow. the tomatoes. And they didn't just like eat one tomato, they took a peck out of each tomato yes. down the line. Yes. So I had to get them out of there. And I took those tomatoes home, they were fine. <laughs> but our CSA members didn't have to get the tomato chickens. But yes. they'll get that tomato goodness in their eggs. Of course. <laughs> Uh, I want you to taste it and tell me okay. when anything is missing. Okay. That's really nice. I think that if we, I can, I can taste the, the strength of the garlic, and I think that it would drizzle a little bit of honey there. Mm -hmm. I think that so, will, yeah. That will really just a little, a little sweetness. Mitigate it and add to the flavor. I also 
I wanted to actually uh, ask you to, to kind of break it down for our viewers. You know, $300 might sound like a lot of money, mm -hmm. and people might think that, you know, I, you know, why should I be spending, you know, this right. kind of money? Right. But when you look at how many weeks you are getting these right. beautiful vegetables. So if our price is, right. th is 330 for the season for a half share, it comes about to about $15 a week. And I would challenge you to go to the organic grocery store and get the amount of produce that you'll have in your bag spending $15. Um, every week we try and give a variety of produce so, for people so we won't give you like 20 onions and 20 heads of lettuce. We try and curate the bags to create a meal and sometimes we even curate them along a theme like Asian or Italian. And every week we have a fresh green like a lettuce, a cooking green, um, a shard or a kale or a cabbage an herb, an allium, so an onion, a garlic, or a leek, and then whatever filled out by whatever is really bountiful at that time. Um, the past month has been tomatoes. Our tomatoes come in late in the Berkshires, but when they come in, boy, there is an abundance. And so the heirlooms have just been beautiful. We set them up, people can take what they will use and really enjoy them. I think that, that everybody uh, everybody wait, is waiting, <laughs> waiting for, tomatoes. for tomatoes and corn. This is kind of like I know. amazing, amazing combination. And at the same time, um, people forget about all other. For them, the important thing is to get their tomatoes and corn. Right. It, it is funny because a lot of farms do try and kind of rush these crops in order to get them out to people who are waiting for them. Yes. And then at the same time, we miss the amazing things that come in right before the yes. tomatoes and corn peas, things like that. So at Shaker, we do have some early season vegetables growing in our greenhouse and stuff, but we really have a focus on allowing things to thrive when they naturally do in our season, and our CSA members appreciate that. That's, that's wonderful. You are, you are, you are doing um, tremendous, uh, a tremendous service to the community. Oh, thank you. And, um, and this, is, this is one of the reasons also why uh, I love living here so much. Yeah, the Berkshires have amazing yes. food. Amazing right. food. Right. So now I'm heating up the skillet. You can smell the oil. I always say you have to be, all your senses have to be present. So we are going to put our beautiful eggs. Oh, look at that. <laughs> and look at these beautiful colors. I and know. then while the eggs are cooking, we will quickly mix um, our dressing for the beets. The beets are ready. And you know they are sweet by themselves. So um, beets, in general, flavor-wise, they benefit from any kind of um, vinegar, any kind of juice, um, citrus juice, like for example lemon or lime or orange juice. They love addition of herbs like tarragon or basil uh, or dill. Uh, let me clean my hands. Okay. So I want them to be really crispy because with the soft be beets with a little bit of crunch there, the crispy egg, we will, we will um, uh, season it when, when it is ready. So let's put it aside. And here we have uh, non-fat Greek yogurt to which I will add a little bit of olive oil. I actually uh, I have observed that unless you have um, you know, fat in your food, the flavor doesn't carry as yeah, well. It just pulls yes, it off your absolutely. Thing. So, do you like cooking yourself, Lauren? I love to cook. I don't get to cook as much as I like in the summer because I'm busy growing the veggies. But honestly, one of my greatest pleasures is to go home on a Sunday when I'm not working and bring home. I bring home some of the cast-off veggies that I don't think are quite up to par for our members, and I also have a kitchen garden. And I just get inspiration from what either has to be used that day or what is in the garden looking amazing. And I just cook. And I kind of cook like I paint. I don't really follow a recipe. I just yes. add, add a little sweetness, add a little bitter. If I need something else, I go outside and grab it from the garden. I find it relaxing and creative. Well, but in the winter, I cook a lot more than I do, I, than I do in the summer. Of course. You're busy working for us all. <laughs> I know, right? OK, so I added lemon juice. I will add a splash of vinegar. I want it to be, you know, pretty, um, 
kind of zesty tasting because beets themselves, they have sweetness and we want to have some tartness, okay? And of course, salt. And if you can, if you can move here and chop, you know, some of that parsley for me, that would be great. See how beautiful? You want this parsley? Mm -hmm. Yeah, crisping up so nicely. Oh, that looks nice. Yes. And you can actually take a spoon and take some olive oil and pour it over to help it along, to help it cooking. Anna, I like your knife. Ah, this this is, is nice. Yes. <laughs> this, um, this is a knife for cutting vegetables, you know? It's beautiful. When you use this kind of knife for cutting vegetables, you can do it all day long and you won't get tired. And I actually um, learned about, about this tip from uh, Andrian Nguyen, who is a, uh, a, a, a famous chef and uh, cookbook writer. And, and it's absolutely true. Yeah, I use a santoku that's a little different than this, but if I can't find my knife, I won't cook. <laughs> <laughs> I need my knife. Okay, so let's take, let's season our eggs. A little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper. Okay. And beautiful. Thank you. You're welcome. All right, so here are our beets. We can just kind of spread them around a little bit and, and place the eggs in the middle. And we'll have a really beautiful dish. You can also roast some seeds. Oh, that would be um, nice. And throw them and that will be, you know, like very nice crunch. Just there is so much you can do with food. We have so many sunflower seeds at the village right now. That would be wonderful to pop yes. them on there. Okay, so um, we'll put our eggs. And see how bright the, the eggs, the egg yolks are. It means that... They're eating the tomatoes. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I always look at the color. <laughs> okay, now what we are going to do is we'll put some of this dressing around. <coughs> okay. And then sprinkle with our parsley. Beautiful and it's going to be delicious to eat and it's going to be uh, wonderful to look at. I think that it just inspires you. It does. To, and wants, you want to eat that stuff, right? Yes, and so for our CSA members, when you get all those beets in your bag, here's something you can do with Yes, that. exactly. It's wonderful. And I, I think that if, if you would like to, to have the recipes, we can post them on on the Hancock Sh Shaker Village website. Perfect, yes, that yes. would be wonderful. And people can uh, just go online and, um, and see what the recipe is and follow it and decide whether they like it or not. Perfect, wonderful, thank well, you. Well, thank you, Lauren, for coming thank and sharing you. this wealth of knowledge and inspiring our viewers to uh, eat healthy, uh, buy locally, and Enjoy good health as a result of it all. Wonderful. Thanks for having me. This is great. Support for this program is provided in part by Guido's Fresh Marketplace.